Last week, while Taylor was fixing some bodywork and I was busy doing business things, I had a thought. I have a thought. Taylor. What? What do you think's more economical? Driving a Mercedes S600 or towing a Mercedes S600? I don't know, actually. Let's find out. Let's do it. That's nice. So to answer my burning question, there was only one thing for it. Take the S600 to the nearest petrol station, brim the tank and find out exactly how economical the old V12 really is over 75 miles. We'll then do the exact same route again, the only difference being that Pete, our new discovery, will be towing the Mercedes S600. After which we'll know for sure if it's cheaper to drive the V12 or drag the V12 behind you. As always, Dumb and Dumber, join me for the journey. So uh, we can't give the exact ride at the moment because Rory doesn't know how to use Google Maps but what I can tell you is we're going to head down the Great Cambridge Road onto the M25 and then from there we're going to join the M11 um, we're going to head up to Duxford at junc Junction 10 come across the Flint Cross back down to the A10 and back to our BP petrol station I actually think that this is almost too close to call. I think I'm going to end up on 23, 24 MPG in the um, in the S600. And towing, I think we're probably going to be around the same with the Disco. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, I reckon you're right, actually. I think it could actually genuinely be a really close match. Now, it is very important to stress here that there is no hypermiling involved. It is literally just us driving these cars as we would normally. When we get onto a motorway, I will be driving at 70 in the Mercedes. When we're towing with the Discovery, with the Mercedes on the back, we can only stick to 60 miles an hour. That is the law, and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. As I said, just drive it as if you're gonna drive it home. Stop accelerating. Sorry, sorry, my fault. We can't let him beat us. Yeah, You're so erratic with your driving. miles an hour, Rory. Alex, have you got the valves open? Let's hear what that V12 sounds like. Come on, give us a little, give us a little drive by. Yeah. Wow, that sounds good. <laughs> that's got to be at least five miles to the gallon off. Oh, uh, okay. That's not very good for economy, so I apologise in advance. What's your MPG now? It went down to 20. <laughs> This does drive very, very, very nicely. Considering it was the cheapest V12 that I could buy in the entire country, air suspension still works all right, cruises nicely, it's very, very quiet. This is a real budget way to make yourself look r mega rich. So how much do you think your car weighs, Alex? I mean, if the Disco weighs 2.4 or 2.5 tons, I'm gonna say that this weighs 1.8, 1.9. It is 2.15 tons. Wow. But with his gut in it, that's 2.3 tons. Because <laughs> he's put on weight. Yeah, you have put on a bit of weight though, Alex. Now, I would say we're probably about similar. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Before we find out how well the cars have done, a reminder from me that if you want to buy yourself a used car, which I know you do, make sure you run a car vertical report on it first, so you can check if the car's been crashed, stolen, or clocked. To give you guys an example of a report that gives me no cause for concern, I have just car verticaled Phil, my V6 MX-5. And as you can see, we've got green ticks for theft, mileage, finance, and damage. That means that this car is a good one, which I already knew, because Phil is the best car in the world. <laughs> To show you guys just how important running a car vertical report is, check out the reports for this Land Rover Evoque. We can see here, we've got an amber warning light already for theft. We've got green ticks for finance and mileage. And then we've got another amber warning for damage. So we want to check that out. And on the new look car vertical reports, you get photos immediately. We can see that there has been colossal front end damage. We can keep on scrolling. It's also been in a fire. Oh my God, the interior is completely burnt. Even the leather seats are of no use. Keep Keep on scrolling down. Theft, it says. The vehicle may be stolen. Show more. We can see currently wanted as stolen. Okay, so we definitely, definitely don't want this car. Unrepairable, some salvageable parts, but I'm guessing not that many. So if you do see this car ever up for sale, then avoid like the plague because it's been in a big one. 
So then before you go out and buy a used car, please do yourselves a favor and make sure you run a car vertical report on it first. I do it every single time I buy a car, which is very often. To sweeten the deal, you can also get 10% off using the code AUTOALEX. Right then, back to the MPG challenge. Do you know what? I actually really like the look of that S600, Alex. Do you want to sell it? Well, Taylor, funny you should ask, because after this video, uh, the S600 is actually being sold. So yes, I do want to sell it. It's a bit knackered. I'll give you 500 quid for it. Taylor, we all know that you like f***ing people over, but 500 pounds <laughs> even for me is an insult. <laughs> I paid 2,800 pounds for this. I've invested probably about a grand by now, mostly on fuel. The lowest I will go for you, and there is a caveat, will be 1500 quid. What's the caveat? So I've also sold Jimmy Jimney. You need to go and drop it off in Park Royal. If the Land Rover wins, I will give you a grand for it. Ooh! And if you beat us, I will give you your full asking price of 1500 pounds. How about that? You've got yourself a deal. <laughs> I can smell a £1,000 Mercedes-Benz S600 on the horizon. Have you had COVID because your nose is lying to you? <laughs> So currently on my dials, I'm seeing 24.9 MPG. How about you guys? Lie to them. Like, what, what, what are we saying? 38. We're getting 39 miles per gallon. <laughs> 39? <laughs> yeah, it, it, honestly, this thing can do like four high 40s, but uh, it's just Taylor's, Taylor's not doing too great with it, but 39's still good. 39, I think, is outstanding. That's really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> You've definitely shit in this car. I, I can, I, I can duff. smell it. I can smell it Did so we, bad. Your duff. farts no. are, are incredibly no. smelly. And the worst thing is, you do it in your sleep as well. <laughs> I do guff in my sleep. We stayed in a hotel together. He was snoring, and I was guffing. It was great. Yeah, but that's because I was, you I was little, ill. You little, no, I was ill. F I was off, ill. You little fat piggy oh, bitch. Oh, just because you had the shits doesn't make you snore. It still doesn't stop the fact that your farts smelt like something had crawled up inside of you, Rory. and then laid a little egg. And then it let it fester for, for five years. <laughs> and then decided that that was the moment that that egg was going to crack. Rory, and then I let, let whatever the liquid was inside of it <laughs> multate <laughs> into some sort of molten lava that was then going to come from your ass. Stop pressing the horn! I'll turn this car around! <laughs> Who are you warning in that you are hit here? Everyone. I am warning uh, everyone of my presence. It's an emergency use item. I am arriving, it's everyone. It's an emergency I'm a car. use it's a, that's, that's not an I'm emergency. Car. It's an emergency. You press your horn. You not don't press it no. 5,000 times no. and then break the cruise control no. in the process. It's only illegal after 10 p.m. You, in a residential area, Rory. You should read the highway code. I've studied it methodically. But still, you smell of shit. I have to say, genuinely, this S-Class, despite its faults, is, is a really, really good car. The air suspension is sublime. There's a wheel bearing that needs to be replaced. So Taylor, if you do actually buy this, then add that to the list as well. It's not really my thing, but you know, it's nice to live with for a little while. Alex, have you heard this? Do you, you want to know why Taylor was late this morning? Well, Taylor seems to think that it was coolant related, but we both know that that was a lie. So I would love to know the truth. No. He was out late last night seeing some little fella I did meet a little fella last night, but we only went for a McFlurry day. I was <laughs> late this morning because Minge lost all of her coolant. It fell out and she got a bit hot. Well, that was genuinely You, you what lost happened. all your coolant last night. No, I didn't. <laughs> I wish. So, Alex, we are nearing the BP garage where we started this voyage. And what has your am average MPG been saying on your dashboard? 26.6 MPG. Not bad. I don't believe you. I would like to examine your dashboard when we start. Let's fill up the S600 and find out the true MPG. Right then, so Taylor and I have both filled up our respective cars for this first part of the test. And Rory, you have the results of the MPG. So we have Alex with 25.9 MPG. 25.9? That's actually really good. Okay, so the car was telling me 1.1, 1 1.2 MPG higher, but 25.9. So, discovery. Is it really that bad? 29.9. What? 29? 29. 29. what? 29.9. What? 
So only four more MPG. So we've got to hope that connecting a trailer and this car doesn't drop us by four miles to the gallon. Yes. yes. Speaking of which, let's go to the unit, hook everything up, come back here, fill back up again, and then do the same route again. It's not looking good though, is it? Let's be honest. Okay, so the Mercedes S600 is now loaded onto the Woodford trailer belonging to Taylor. What we're gonna do now is go back to the petrol station, fill up the Discovery and do the exact same 75 mile loop. Confident? Didn't think so. Let's go. I'm just gonna, oh, you bitch. Ow, that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> All right, this is the second part of the video. We're doing the maths so you don't have to. And if it transpires that yes, it is more economical to do it this way, then everyone will have to go out and buy themselves a peat of their own. And you've got to daily drive it like this. <laughs> yes, exactly right, yeah. yeah. So if you work in central London and you drive an S-Class, this is your new rig. <laughs> I'm going to do a review of all the vehicles that we pass, an opinion. Taylor's honest and oh, biased opinion. There's a Mondeo, they voted Brexit. Oh, oh, she's on her phone! She's, she's, on, she's on, on her phone! Her phone. Get off your phone! That is a titanium, to be fair. Oh, That's fair, a high no. spec car. Oh, no, That's she's allowed then. She's That's, allowed. And the Astras, they're just rubbish. Oh, they all smell like cigarette smoke. Oh, oh. we got a Mini! Oh, good choice, that man. That's a good car. Yeah. And that's Taylor's car reviews. Do you want to take that I'll before take I smash it up? I want to get Peter Crouch in Pete. Peter Crouch in P. Peter Crouch, I have messaged you on Twitter. So you've been stalking Peter Crouch? On Twitter, yeah, a little bit. All right, everyone DM Peter Crouch on Twitter. Yeah, if you see him in the street, tell him, Pete, we want to see you inside Pete. Okay, so we are approximately four miles away from the petrol station. So what we're going to do is we're going to head there, fill up and find out which of these two rigs is the most cool. economical. But first... Oh, you... That I was hurt. getting you... Back. Oh my god, stop out! You need to calm you down. You started it. You can't. Yeah, I was getting you back. <laughs> Can we not break Pete's way? Come on. He's <laughs> new. He's <laughs> new, for God's sake. What did Pete do to you? Okay, so we started this video with one simple question. What is more economical, to drive this car by itself under its own steam or to tow this car on a trailer with our new Discovery Pete. Only Rory knows the answer because Rory, you filled up the Discovery just now. We did the same 75 mile route and now you're gonna tell us what is the more economical way to take this. So the MPG on the Discovery alone was 29.9. Driven by Taylor. Yeah. The MPG on the S-Class alone was 25.9. Which was very good. That is really good. Yeah, I was really yeah, impressed surprisingly that. good. Yeah, yeah. And the MPG of the Disco towing the S-Class was 24.7. Oh. 24.7. That's still pretty good though, That is still it? quite good. It's one mile per gallon. Yeah, so the summary of this episode is if you have a Mercedes-Benz S600 V12, then you don't need to buy yourself a very expensive trailer and a quite expensive tow car to get about because it is in fact more economical just to drive the car. And we do this consumer advice so you don't have to. Yes. More, any more to say? Except for thank you very much for watching. And uh, thank you, oh! <laughs> I thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring this episode. From me, from Rory, and from Taylor, have a great weekend. Come here! Oh fuck! Come here! 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 Come here!